Hello everyone! Welcome to the next lesson of my Computer Craft Fluid tutorial. In this lesson, we'll be going over for loops. A loop in programming is a block of code that gets repeated either an infinite or usually finite number of times. The for loop loops over an iterator. An iterator is a number that increases or decreases a certain amount every loop. The way a for loop works is you have a variable that is equal to a number such as i equals 1, i equals 1. This variable is the iterator, and 1 is the number it will start at. Then you have a constant number, let's say 10. This is the number that the iterator will stop at before it breaks out of the loop. i increases by 1 every time it loops, so on the first loop i is 1, then on the second loop i is 2. Essentially, the iterator does i equals i plus 1 at the end of each loop, and it keeps looping until i is greater than 10. The way a for loop is written is similar to an if statement. You write for i equals 1, comma, 10, do, and then you put the code you want to run, and then you put end to close the loop. Optionally, you can include another constant number that tells the iterator to increase or decrease a specific amount. Without this argument, by default, the loop counts up by 1, but if you put comma 4 after the ending number, it will increase by 4 instead of 1 at the end of each loop, in which case the loop will only repeat 3 times instead of 10. If you want the iterator to decrease instead of increase, you can put a negative number instead of a positive one. The thing is, if you leave the for loop as it is now, we'll have a small problem. You see, a for loop needs to be finite. You cannot create an infinite loop with a for loop in Lua. If your iterator decreases by 4, but your starting number is positive 1 and your ending number is 10, the loop can't end. As such, Computercraft will not allow the loop to run. In order for this loop to work, you need to change the ending number to something that's less than the starting number. The starting number also does not have to be 1. It can start at any value. In this case, it should be greater than the ending number. Fun fact! The way this works now is not how it used to work. Computercraft used to allow infinite for loops to happen. Not that infinite for loops are ever useful, but I found out about this change while writing my scripts and got very confused. Infinite loops are useful in other situations, but I'll go over more about them in a future lesson. When it comes to the iterator variable, it is just a number variable, so you can do anything you can do with a number. However, you cannot manipulate the loop by changing the iterator value. I've prepared this code to demonstrate what happens. The program will print what i is and what it will be on the next loop, then it will add 3 to i. Then it will print what i is now after the addition, and what it should be on the next loop. Let's see what it does. Unfinished string. Whoops. What are it? Where? Oh, right here. As you can see, i is 12 and will become 8 after the iteration, but after adding 3, i becomes 15 and should be 11 after the iteration, but it's not. i is 8, which is exactly what the first line said it would be i is always an iteration of its starting number, and any changes you make to i inside the loop have no effect on the iteration whatsoever from one loop to the next. There are other types of loops with which you can accomplish this, but I'll save those for future lessons. In the previous lesson, I taught you about tables, and tables work really well with for loops. As I explained before, tables are objects that can hold multiple values. Instead of creating multiple variables like fruit1 equals apple, fruit2 equals orange, and fruit3 equals pear, you would instead do a table with each fruit as an element. Let's say this was part of a script for a shop that sells fruits. The for loop would be used to iterate over the table to show the list of available fruits at the shop. You would write it like so. First, let's remove the amount to iterate since we know we are counting up by 1. Then, let's set the ending number to 3 because we know there are 3 elements in the table. And of course, we're starting at 1. Next, let's print the necessary information. Using the concatenate operator I showed you in lesson 1-3, you can use the iterator as a sort of ID number for the fruit. And then you can also use the iterator to index an element in the table. And then we can save the program, and when we try it out, we get a list of all the fruit available at this shop. Doing this is way more effective and makes the code much, much cleaner than typing the same print statement for each individual fruit. This is especially true if you have a table with like 100 elements in it. And that's it! If you have any questions about what I covered in this lesson, please feel free to ask me in the comments section of this video. There are still more things you can do with for loops and tables, but I will save those things for the next lesson. I hope to see you all then, and thanks so much for watching.